Okay, so uh, I'd like to welcome up to the stage uh, Ken Church from Enscript, who will be telling us about 3D printed electronics uh, are powerful when combined with chips. Thanks, Ken. Okay, thanks so much uh, for the opportunity. Uh, congrats, by the way, to TechFlick and what they're putting together. That's they've they've done a tremendous job in moving some things forward. <coughs> Let's see if we can make this work. So. Um, I think there's plenty to talk about when you start thinking about how 3D print electronics can impact, uh, I guess, the next generation of electronics. That's really where we're trying to get to. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about what's in a name because there's been an evolution in this naming thing and it's got, it'll probably continue to evolve, but eventually it sets. A little bit about 3D, like 3D print electronics as according to Ken and what that is as far as what I say 3D print electronics is. What chips means, uh, 3D print electronics demonstrators, and then some weird places we're going and then we'll draw a conclusion. And so here's the question, why so many names? It started out for, and especially the TechFlick folks know this because they changed their name too, by the way. But it started out as print electronics, and that was really not print electronics, it really came from direct write. And direct write is really cool, except for one thing, it means really slow. And then there's uh, flexible electronics, as those things start combining. And, and when it really came out as th uh, print electronics, as we're going, so 3D print electronics started making sense because people understood print electronics. And so layman's term for print electronics, or 3D print electronics, is really added manufactured electronics. And so we said added manufactured electronics is, of course, additive. That's sort, sort of the point. And then it, it moved to what we call direct digital manufacturing, and that's the technical term. And so it just means more than additive. And so you can do subtractive or other processes. And then 3D manufacturing, layman's terms for direct digital manufacturing. And that's just it for you marketers that you guys seem to like cute names, uh, something that people can understand. I think that's what went through. Uh, chips, on the other hand, um, well, for those of you who are from the United States, you know one thing, it meant money. And that's all you cared about. That's all any of us care about, frankly. And so it really got down to it. Uh, the CHIPS program came out. It was CHIPS and Science Act. And it was billions and billions of dollars. And so far, well, not so much. And so we're still waiting for that to sort of roll down to the rest of us little people. Uh, some of the big folks like Intel, they're starting to experience some of that and where they're trying to expand that out. And then chips themselves, semiconductors, uh, that's really where that is going and where that's at. <clears throat> and so 3D manufacturing, it's not all about just 3D printing. That's really where we're at. So well, I'm showing you an Inscript system, and that's one of uh, several versions that we have. But it's just a lot of different processes in a single system, including pick and place. And so the question is, why would you do that? And so I think it's really about full automation so that when you punch a button, I like the last speaker, what he said, people don't want to touch this thing. They don't want to adjust this thing. And we have some customers like that. They say the problem sometimes is we have to adjust your system and we're not super happy about that. And so they want to, we're trying to automate that out. And that's really where this is going in full automation. But at the end of the day, it's, it's many things in one system. And so also why we sometimes uh, phrase it as factory in a tool. Uh, <clears throat> and so let's go about chips and what, what they are. For those of you who are from the semiconductor industry, uh, you guys know front end process really well, like really well, but you probably can't spell PCB. And the whole idea is these are very, very separate things that go on. And so the processes are very different. Uh, front end process, back end process, PCB, and don't forget for those of you who've been around long enough, LTCC is also something that has been out there for a long time and is now starting to make a resurgence. And we'll try to address that in just a little bit. But think about it. I love it how Apple does this. They're talking about 114 trillion, 114 trillion transistors in a device. Now, I don't know if that means anything to you, but that's as big as the, the uh, US federal deficit that we have going. And so when you really get down to it, it just means it's a lot is what it means. And so if you're going to print a transistor, we're going to be here a real, like 114 trillion years before we can make one of those. And so we have to learn to work together is really where that's going. And so the same thing. And I want you to look where it's going. So they're doing five nanometer technology right now, and it's going to go to two nanometer technology. Samsung just announced that. They're going to start working on two nanometer technology. They're not going to stop, right? It keeps going. PCB, all these guys are very stubborn in where they're going. They want to thrive. They want to survive. And so it's, it's a continuation of how that thing uh, continues to go. All right, so where do we fit? How do we play? And it's really like you have to get to the outside world. You can have a transistor, but that's really small. Two nanometers, I don't know if you know how small that is, but yeah, it's really small. And so it really gets down to this. How do you go from there to where we live? And so this is where the back end comes in. This is where PCB comes in. But here's the thing, though. As the expression go goes, um, uh, printed circuit boards and all these chip things are flat, but the world is not. And so we live in a non-flat world. And so how do we get out to this non-flat you know, area that we live? And so we can play in that. And so my upper um, right-hand corner, you see me printing on a bare die down the 
the bear diet and then off. And okay, 